Hello, welcome to game six of the Small Games Finals, uh, Angover versus CP, uh, Angover's first player in this game. And they need this win to stay in the tournament. Um, they made it all the way to the finals. Um, both these players have been, were underdogs along the way. Um, These are very well done by them. I uh, look forward to seeing them potentially uh, in the medium games tournament, which is the tournament for players whose who've, uh, rating has gone higher than you can for this tournament. Um, and it's exciting to see, see these players getting better and knowing that, you know, in a year or so or two, they'll be, uh, beating me. And I'll remember back when, uh, back when they were, I was commentating their small games. So looking forward to that. What, um, what we have here seems to lack villages. We have some trashing with, with rat catcher. You can get, get stuff thinned a little bit. Um, stone mason, although you're not a very good trasher. Um, we've got some reliability stuff with Dungeon. Uh, potentially you could play with Vassal, I'm not quite sure how here. You can use Artificer to top deck the card and play Vassal to hit it. Um, you're still action limited, so that makes this pretty tough. Um, Battlefield rewards early greening a little bit. Uh, Commerce also rewards um, gaining cards. So this is, yeah, I mean, Stone Mason for Double Rat Catcher, it's a weird opening, but it seems, it seems pretty reasonable. And I would take a, a, a dungeon there, I think, for reliability or just a cycle. But, you know, they take the silver and immediately hit five, so hard to, hard to complain about that. Um, I think the first five I want to be Artificer, um, especially if you're going thin with Rat Catcher. Um, the alternative deck here is just Hunting Grounds money. You buy, a, you open with a couple of silvers, um, you add, add a couple more silvers, you buy that Hunting Grounds, you start buying golds and, and hit, uh, hit provinces pretty, pretty early. Um, there is a deck that plays with Artificer and you gain a dungeon and then you vassal a dungeon and now you've got a village. Um, it seems a lot harder to do. The Hunting Grounds money deck, um, like straight Scrooge McDucking, I think they call it. Um, where you're just getting all the money and then playing with it. Um, yeah, the battlefield is 12 extra victory points for the, for the deck that greens first. Um, and, you know, potentially the deck that's that's doing the engine stuff can artificer for estates and then rat catcher them, but that's a lot of, lot of effort, it seems. Um, and every card you rat catcher is one smaller hand size for your artificer to discard and gain. Um, and I think in the pure money deck, you really don't want Rat catchers or stone masons. Maybe early on getting a rat catcher or two is fine. I I don't know the I don't quite know the effect of rat catcher on a big money type deck. Um, it seems like it's going to slow down getting your big money setup going, and you know you don't really mind having extra coppers in that deck. You do care about not having a bunch of silvers. Um, so maybe there's a deck that adds does the stone mason double rat catcher silver. Adds some more silvers, starts pick up, picks up the honey grounds. Um, vault money is also also quite possible. Um, vault money doesn't work as well in the thin deck with rat catchers because you you know vault is great when you're drawing coppers and estates uh, and provinces. When you're drawing silvers and rat catchers, it's a little bit less inspiring. Um, inspiring what you're doing. There's also like I wish there was some way to activate commerce here. There doesn't seem like there's a really good way to activate commerce. Other than artificers, you're artificing for dungeons or two costs like rat catcher, and you buy commerce, and maybe you get two golds. Um, it's it's fairly fairly uninspiring. Um, like a, does a storeroom money deck buy an estate and then commerce for the gold? It doesn't doesn't really make sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, if they, if they if you buy contraband and then they name stone mason, <laughs> just to, to be like I'm gonna say stone mason. What are you gonna buy? And then you're very, very sad. Sure. Uh, and it's like, why did you name the two costs worst action on the board? Um, well, it's the worst action on play, but on, on gain, it's you know one of the more powerful actions in the kingdom. Um, I'll note, this isn't present here. Stone Mason is a very, very powerful card for three piling. Um, you could pay four and gain three Stone Masons. Um, you could pay four more and gain a Stone Mason and two Rat Catchers. All of a sudden, the Rat Catcher and Stone Mason piles disappear instantly. If you've got some money and some buys, which we don't seem to have either of those going right now. Um, so Engo replays the vault. They're able to get seven here, which is nice. Um, I think you just, just take a gold. 
Um, you want to add big money cards to the deck because we're generally playing kind of a variant of, of big money here. Really, you want to hit um, six as often as possible to get golds or hunting grounds. And then, you know, I think with Battlefield, this kind of thing, you're going to start provinces pretty much the first time you see eight. Um, I don't like the hunting grounds quite yet. They've already got a vault. They've got a vault two rat catchers and a stonemason down there. So there's a lot of cards that can draw dead. I think I want the gold first. So at least if you're drawing four, if you draw some stuff dead, you're also going to hit gold. Um, see if he gets an artificer. They seem to be going a different direction. I've got a couple of artificers. Um, and they've also got silver. Silvers don't function well in the artificer deck. I think you want dungeons and um, vassals in the, in the uh, artificer deck. You know, we saw the sort of sad... Sad draw of Hunting Grounds, then they get a Vault, which is, like, they've got three three dead draw cards, um, plus a Stone Mace and Terminal Action, and two Rat Catchers to dead draw. So this, they've kind of played a weird hybrid money strategy. Um, CP gains another Rat Catcher. We'll see what they do on five. Um, anything other than the money deck, I want Dungeons in on this kingdom. Um, for Angover, I definitely am trashing a Copper here. And buying a silver, um, their deck cannot support any more any more terminal actions. So they need to, you know, if they can thin coppers a little bit, then they should be looking to, to rat catcher away this stone mason um, and the two estates. And then, you know, they've got three terminal draw cards and a fairly small deck still. Now they've got four. The, the, the strategy seems a little bit off. Like you really want gold to the deck with all these terminal draw cards. Um, for CP, their deck, going for the Artificer stuff, I think you want Dungeons for Cycling and Reliability. You can also, on the second turn, you can play the Dungeon before you activate your Rat Catcher, so you can have a better chance of hitting an Estate to Trash. Um, and this deck really wants to get rid of, any kind of engine deck wants to get rid of those Estates and Coppers. So they did what I said, which is good, they trashed that Snow Mason. Uh, it served its purpose, it got them that extra Rat Catcher on turn one. And... Again, they're hitting five, which is pretty much the worst, the worst price point here. Um, you really want to be getting golds before before you do anything. Um, if you went the pure money route, where you just bought a couple silvers, um, tried to get to six to hit the hunting grounds, you do get the hunting grounds before you get the gold. Um, but the hunting grounds is also the first action card in that deck. I don't think you get any other action cards in that deck. I could be made to believe that you maybe add a dungeon or some rat catchers to that deck, but it doesn't feel quite right for the money-ish deck. Um, Hunting Grounds money is going to be pretty strong and start, and it would already be provincing at this point. Um, and then you're you're pretty much every chance you get, you're going to hit hit your hit six once you actually draw Hunting Grounds. So this could be um, discard three to gain a dungeon by a vassal. Um, this could just be Stone Mason for two Artificers. That doesn't seem to do that much. Um, you know, the way this deck, you know, you know, I, I, trying to figure out how this deck kicks off in a, in a positive way. Something like Vassaling and hitting your Stone Mason, and then you can play a Vassal and hit a Hunting Ground. Well, that feels kind of like draw neutral, um, but at least it's, it's something. So Engover is able to uh, hit eight here. Yeah, CP's deck will will start to fall apart once you hit green. I think Engover's deck, unfortunately, has already kind of fallen apart. They've got four terminal draw cards in whatever it is, fifteen card deck, and you really need to be, you know, you really only want one hunting ground early, and then maybe a second hunting ground. Um, after you've gotten a couple golds, and maybe not until after you've started provincing. The Hunting Grounds draws so much, and and you don't really need a ton of extra draw to make that deck work. Yeah, the, I don't I don't think the Artificer Vassal thing works. I mean, that's why we both thought uh, Hunting Grounds money money was the best best strategy here. Does Engover have a Rat Catcher down? I would not discard here as Engover. I would trash the estate, get the other Rat Catcher into play, and then play the Vault. Um, yep, so they've got a province, and they've got the gold. Um, as I said, with Battlefield here, I think I'm just taking the province. 
They didn't trash the estate. I'm not quite sure why they can know deterministically they've got gold and silver and vault is going to be worth at least three money, no matter what when they play. Um, I guess the nice thing about vault is you can discard the other vaults, but if if those vaults were silvers, this would be a much, you know, potentially a much better turn. Um, much less likely to dud. And I'm not sure why they're not discarding the estate. Yeah, probably, maybe maybe they just want to leave the, 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 the hunting grounds out of the, or the rat catchers out of the deck forever and pretend they don't have rat catchers anymore. Um, if it was, if yeah, so they either didn't do the math that I had done or they did the math but decided it wasn't worth it trashing the estate. Um, they should expect to see a vault almost every turn. Um, and with vault, you start with five cards, you play the vault, you have four, you discard, you go up to six. So if you, if you have four money in those six, in two cards, if you have two silvers and a vault in hand, and you're starting five, you can get to eight, um, which is quite nice. So if, whatever they are, states, provinces, whatever, um, if you, or if you have gold copper, you can get to eight. So potentially vault money is good. So we figured out why. We figured out why they uh, kept aside the rat catcher. I, I, I am not quite sure what to say. That was a strange. I mean, it's worth six victory points, right? They're, they're getting all those battlefield points. They're potentially denying CP at least two battlefield points. But I think they're just just hurting their deck pretty badly. Um. The, the cost to your deck of having those estates in it and having that rat catcher in it, it's going to be tough to get that clean um, and get back around the provinces again. I've not looked at the statistics on this. Um, I've not spent a lot of time with the Scrooge McDucking strategy, um, which is what, what Reddit calls big money strategy. Um, it could be that Vault big money is better here than Hunting Grounds big money. I could definitely be convinced of that. I'm not 100% sure, but um, as I said, with vault money, all you have to do is find two silvers and, and uh, your vault will get you a province or a gold and copper. Um, so hit it, and then vault will always hit six money in a five card hand, no matter what. So even if you draw six curses, you can discard six curses and buy a gold. Um, so vault is a nice, nice kind of card for, for a big money type deck. It could be a nice card for, for, for other deck types as well. Um, normally, Hunting Grounds is better because it draws twice as many cards, but um, if you're drawing all green cards, then you know that's not doing a lot, whereas Vault, if you draw green cards, you're, you're more okay with it. Um, but you do have to have some of those treasures in hand to, to hit your $8 price point. Um, and we're seeing here the, the exact case I said, 8. Um, so the deck that has a bunch of extra Vaults, is, you know, Vault Collision is better than almost any other kind of Terminal Collision. So, you know, that... That maybe they just got that hunting grounds way back when they got it in order to try to line it up for a rat catcher to get all those battlefield points. Um, given how long it took, it seems at least possible that CP could have greened more aggressively. And um, by the time that they played that uh, rat catcher on the hunting grounds, they only got two battlefield points, which would have made a, a worse play. Although they could have just not not trashed it then and used it for uh, used it for the draw, which is not terrible. Uh, well, it is terrible in a, in a deck with three vaults, but in general, uh, you know, Hunting Grounds money is a good good card. There's a game somewhere, Shanahan versus H-Roll, where we played like a pure Hunting Grounds money game. I think it was Hunting Grounds and Ducket in a Colony Platinum game. Uh, and I think I bought two two Hunting Grounds, one Ducket, and then no other Kingdom cards that game. Um, and they tried to mess around and add a few other pieces um, and the pure... Scrooge McDuck strategy one. So unfortunately I go over here only hitting six, which which is gonna sometimes happen in this deck with all those extra estates, right? Um, and I think I think gold is the right discard game there. Um, I could have thought for 30 or 40 seconds on whether gold or duchy is pref preferred. Um, if they buy Duchy, they get to 28, CP buys Province to 29, and Gober buys Province to 34, CP buys Province to um, 35. So 
they don't win if CP Province is twice in a row here anyways. So maybe that's what they're thinking, the, the extra duchy. Um, the extra duchy doesn't doesn't win in the case where CP can province twice in a row. And if CP doesn't province here, they buy a duchy, they're at 26, then Gover can buy can buy two provinces in a row and win. Um, so that seems like a reasonable reasonable gain there for the gold. Um, and they know with these vaults, they're gonna they're gonna be drawing through, and they're, they're, they've got a good chance of seeing that gold before the end of the game. Um, as CP here, I think I would discard three in Gain and Dungeon uh, to the top of the deck, and then you've got a uh, silver to the top of the deck is reasonable. We'll see. We'll see if they track their deck. Um, they did have a dungeon down there already. Okay, so that that makes a lot of sense then to me that they top deck the silver because the, they ha they knew they had a dungeon coming in. Um, if they didn't know they had a dungeon coming in, I would have gained a dungeon just to try to cycle. Um, and it's not as good the first turn, but the second turn is going to be quite nice. And go over here, can buy it by a province, um, put CP in a real tough, real tough spot. I, I, and go you know, normally in this kind of situation, I just discard all the cards except for silvers and golds with the vault. Um, they're discarding only as many as they need, which is probably sort of strictly speaking, the correct information play. Uh, but I'll just comment that that's, that's, a th that's a decision that they're making. So they really should play the Artificer first here. It lets them draw an extra card and perhaps discard um, a green card to this dungeon instead of a uh, copper. Um, as it turns out, they drew another dungeon, which is a little unfortunate that they bottom decked one dungeon and then top decked the other two. Um, Huh. Discarding the other dungeon is strange. I think I want to put that into play and say I'm challenging you to try to province twice in a row. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I, I, you just have to take a duchy here and hope hoping Gover has a has a bad turn. Having now seen the, the bottom part of Angover's deck, having gained that gold earlier seems a little bit questionable, um, given how easy it has been for them to province twice in a row. Um, maybe they could have just taken a duchy. Um, and trusted their deck to get get provinces two turns in a row. Uh, but this this is a pretty easy turn. I think you play the vault to cycle through because you've seen all. I think I think they'd seen all of their golds, so they knew the bottom three cards weren't golds, and they all they want to do is find find golds. So they can discard copper. Province pretty easily, and then two coppers pretty easily. So I think you're always just going to play both artificers and then reassess. Um, so they're not buying a province. They don't. Oh, they uh, fancy resigned. Interesting. Okay, um, I think they could have played on. There's a chance. Um, their opponent bottom decked a whole bunch of a whole bunch of vaults and, and couldn't province, but it's unlikely. But um, you know they figured they figured it was it was that. So uh, JCK, do you want to post a game seven alert in the uh, in the uh, Discord to let people know there's a game seven coming up? We get some uh, bonus winner take all dominion.